Grace and peace to you all in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Mirang Bak, the senior pastor here at Ginto Park United Methodist Church. We welcome all of you worshiping today with us on YouTube and Facebook. We invite you to subscribe our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page and share this video with your friends. Also, if you have joys and concerns you want to share with us, please comment down below. We want to celebrate and pray with you. Also, you may continue to give your tithes and offering through our website, GintoParkUMC.org. Today, we gather together to celebrate God's glory and worship God. Let's center ourselves for worship on 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Please join me for a call to worship. Hungering and thirsting, we come to the Lord. Jesus is the living bread. Feed us with your love and healing power, O Lord. Give us the bread of hope and compassion that we may also feed others. Praise be to you, O Lord, for your compassion for us. Praise be to you, O Lord, for your steadfast love. Amen. Who am I that the Lord of all the earth will care to know my name, will care to feel my hurt? Who am I that the bright and morning star Again, I invite you to share your joys and concerns. Comment down below. Please join me for pastoral prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Most wonderful and gracious God, do we really dare to believe in Jesus Christ 
That is a question that often goes up unspoken, but does rest in our hearts. Lord, help us in our unbelief. Help us to be courageous enough to accept the love that you have for us and the power you have for forgive, to forgive and heal our souls. We live in a time of great hostility, fear, and strife. It is easy for us to succumb to the terrors and for, forget that you are with us at all times, seeking peace and hope. You have asked us to be instruments of peace and justice. To do this, we need to change our attitudes and practices to reflect your love and compassion and not be vehicles for our greed and need for approval. Jesus, the bread of life, has taught us the importance of serving others. And in that service, we will do honor to you. Create in us hearts that are eager to serve and witness to your love. Open our lives this day and pour your healing mercies into them, that we may be messengers of hope to all whom we meet. Fill us with the Spirit of Christ when we continue to pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But what if we could love the way Jesus did? Passionately, faithfully, powerfully. What if the way we love could make a difference in the world around us? What if that love looked at everyone the way God does? A love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger. A love which protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? lesson for today is taken from the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel, beginning to read at the 35th verse. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And then beginning at the 41st verse. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can you now say, I've come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourself. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Verily, truly, I say, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord.
praise to you, O Christ. Loving friends, Gospel according to John says Jesus is the bread of life, or the bread of heaven, or the living bread. Also, Jesus says that whoever believes in him has eternal life. In the story of feeding the crowd five thousand, Jesus had compassion for them, and he took the five barley loaves and two fish, and blessed them, broke them, and gave them to the crowd. Blessing and sharing with compassion transformed people's lives. We used to be discouraged or encouraged by the issue of size and number. God does not want us to pay more attention to how old we are, how many offerings we collect, how many worship attendants we have. Those kind of things. Instead, God wants us and our church to focus on how much we love one another and how compassion and how compassionate we are, how prayerful we are, and how active. And vital we are. Today, we've read another story of the bread of life written in the Gospel according to John. We can find the reaction from those who were opposed to Jesus. They heard that Jesus said, "I am the bread of life, came down from heaven." However, Jewish people. Who were opposed to Jesus were grumbling about him, because for them Jesus was just the son of Joseph and Mary. It meant that the Jewish opposition in the text was looking at Jesus only by their physical experiences and eyes. However, they knew very well the story of the bread came down from heaven because the because the story of manna. Had been ceaselessly told by their parents and ancestors. Their ancestors in the wilderness ate manna every day provided by God. The metaphor of the bread of heaven was very well known to all Jewish people. The sign of God's compassionate love had been already given in their history and memory. However, they treated. The tale, as a fossil that was no longer vital but dead. I think that they no longer saw themselves through the story of manna, the bread of heaven. It meant, it meant that they would be fallen into the state of spiritual death, and they would be separated from the living and loving God. Sinful hearts. Would arrest it, arrest them. In the text of John, Jesus said, "I am the bread of life, came down from heaven." What does it mean? Biblically, heaven is understood as the realm of God. It is a very mythical and symbolic experience, exp- expression. We say that every single being on the earth is under heaven. And also, we used to say that heaven gives rain and sunshine to all things, and let them be rooted, grow, and make fruit. In other words, heaven means something which is necessary for all creatures to be living beings. Therefore, heaven point points out God, the Creator. According to the Old Testament. God is the one who created all things and cared for them. Creation and care are not separated, but deeply interconnected to one another in God's hands. When God created a human being, according to the image of God, God placed the human being in the Garden of Eden. And allowed them to eat all except for the fruit of the tree of knowledge. When Adam and Eve rebelled against God and God's law, God decided them to be out of Eden. 
However, God made clothes for them because God knows, God knew their feeling and shame. It was God's care. In the story of Noah, when Noah began to make the first step and、uh, to live in the dry land after the flood, God made a new covenant with him and his family, and with all living beings from the ark. At that time, God allowed humans to eat meats. It was God's creation and care. When the ancient Israelites were in the wilderness after being delivered from Egypt, when they were hungry and thirsty, God fed them by manna every day until they entered the promised land. The Old Testament tells us God was the one who was like heaven. The one who cared for all God's creatures and God's people, God let people be God's children. God called Abram to let him become Abraham. God called Jacob and made him Israel. God responded to their physical needs, but the most important thing was that God changed their lives, their whole being, and let them be. God's living people in the world. My siblings in Christ, God is the one who creates and cares for us. God is the one who enables us to fill our lives with good things. God is the one who cha- who is changing us and letting us be God's children in the world. It is God. It is good news for us and for all, for all of us, friends. God is the one who provides us the living bread, Jesus Christ, so that eternal life is given to us. We believe that we've been counted in God's salvation. Jesus says, "Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Yours." Jewish, your Jewish ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that whoever eats from it will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats the bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Loving friends, Jesus is the bread of life for us again. It enables us to satisfy our authentic hunger. It opens our spiritual eyes to see who God is and who we are. It also energizes us to live as God's people in the world. God, Jesus also defines Himself as the living bread. It means that Jesus is not something that is dead or passed, like a fossil in a museum. Jesus is the living God who is present right here and right now, to us, and for us, and with us. Jesus is alive. Whoever believes in Jesus has eternal life. Friends in Christ. Do not forget that Jesus is the living bread. It is not a fossil. It is not dead, old, or past. It is vital, and it is present. It is now letting us to be alive. It is eternal vitality, changing people's lives and connecting them to God. It is the power of the living and loving God. Now, are we active? In the name of Jesus Christ, are we engaged in the power of the Holy Spirit? God enables us to renew ourselves here and now. God allows us to vitalize ourselves here and now. Do not forget that Jesus became the living bread for us through His life-giving action. We are called to be living bread in the name of Jesus Christ. To, the, to one another and all the world, we call one another brothers and sisters in Christ. It means that we are, we all are children of God, and called by God into eternal life. 
we are called to be deeply connected in God's love. It is God's mysterious call and grace for all of us who are in many differences. Therefore, this God's call asks us to pr- persistently accept one another in love and patience and kindness. Especially, Ephesians says, put away from you all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and wrangling, and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. To believe in Jesus, the living bread, means that we are called to find Christ's hands, Christ's feet, and Christ's face hidden in one another and all other people in the world. But also to be a sign of the presence of Christ to one another and all the world. Ephesians says about, about it in very insightful words. Chapter, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 read, Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Friends, we have debt of the love of God in and through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It is the love of God we can only boast It is what we trust and obey. Therefore, let us make efforts to be imitators of God, the love of God, through our whole beings. Let us build up the faith congregation as the agent of the love of God in this world. We believe that God surely will be with us as we strive to imitate God's love. I want to wrap up my sermon with a story about a restaurant in Japan. The restaurant is in a small town. It looks like a very typical restaurant. However, customers may take hamburger, even though they ordered an omelet. Or they may take pork cutlet, although they ordered fried chicken. Sushi may be served to them, although they asked ramen. They may get another dish when their meals ordered are already on the table. Also, their seats are often double booked at the same time. However, those who come to the restaurant are never angry at these mistakes. They never complain at all. They accept all mistakes. Rather, they enjoy all messed up situations. The restaurant is called and titled Mistakes Over Flooded House. All servers of the restaurant are senior women with dementia. The senior women know that they have dementia. However, they do their best to serve all those who come to their restaurant. The restaurant is launched by the local government to embrace elderly people as members of the community continually. Many volunteers participate in the works of the restaurant to help the servers with dementia, and they learn a lot from the presence of the servers. They address the elderly women serving people in the restaurant are all mothers or those who were willing to allow and embrace mistakes in their homes or their workplaces or their villages. Everyone who comes to the restaurants knows and acknowledges this point very well. Therefore, we know well that we are in the time to be willing and happy to allow their mistakes and we are in the time to let these elderly people be living and vital again in the community. 
This story reminds us of becoming a living bread to one another and all the world. Friends, Jesus is the living bread, living bread. It is not past. It is not old. It is not a fossil in a museum. But it is real, vital, and it is here and now for us, to us, and with us. As believing in it, be imitators of God, imitators of Christ, the living bread. I pray that you find moments and times to be living, to be living bread to your neighbors and even strangers when you live out the word of God this week and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Loving friends, may the love of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sustainer rest upon you and live through you this day and always. Now go in peace. Amen.